Every year in the NFL, it's a new team. As far as goals go, we have one. Putting a ring on our finger. Welcome to the Buccaneers Observer Podcast. This is Ralph Phillips. I'm Molly Bay. Today is January 21st, 2022. Two more days. Two more oh days. Gosh. Two more days. Okay, I'm probably... <laughs> I'm I'm more stressed out about this one than I have been the other ones. Yes. I'll be honest. It's going to be a good game, though. Oof. Either way. Man, I'll tell you what. Yeah. Yeah, you know, last year, the Washington game, we were like, yeah, that'll be easy. It was a little rough, but we won. Then we had the Saints game. Man, we were nervous about that one. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> you know, mm-hmm. they, we hadn't beaten them in a while, and they were coming in strong. And then we whooped them. Man, did that feel good. It felt so good. It did. And then we went to Green Bay. <clears throat> we were nervous about that one. Had confidence, though. Had confidence for both of them. This one, <laughs> said it said at the beginning of the year, the only team I'm worried about is the Rams. And <laughs> here we are. Here we are. And I, you know, you were, you were wanting the Cardinals to win, and I was wanting the Rams to win just so that we could beat them in the playoffs. But as soon as the Rams whooped them, I was like, oh, that was dumb, Ralph. <laughs> I know. Didn't you see why I wanted the Cardinals to win? Because they were bad. Yeah, yeah. They looked bad. They looked real bad. <laughs> but I don't know. Was it the Rams that made them look bad, or are they just bad? I, I think you know, it's a combination. I think it's, yeah, yeah. They're not They're not ready for primetime yet. Yeah, agree. But the Rams, man, they, you know, they've had our number. So we beat them in 2019, right? Yeah, wasn't that like an overtime game? Or did they beat us? Didn't Matt Gay miss a kick? No, we won that one. Okay. Uh, With 50, Matt Gay. 55 to 40. Woo. That was 2019. Oh, but, okay. <laughs> okay, look, we played them since 2012. We played them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times. We've won one. Wow. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. But this is a different Rams team from all those. And we're a different Bucks team from and all those. And we're a different Bucks team. Yeah, right, we are. <laughs> we are not the the stumbling, bumbling Bucks anymore. Uh, yeah, but, you know, I, I'll say this. They beat us in the 1999 NFC Championship. The greatest show on turf against the best defense. If you ask me, the best defense has ever existed. And we held them to 11 points. It ended up being 11 to 6. That was a, the Burt Emanuel rule was established because of that play. He caught the ball, went to the ground. The ball never moved, but it touched the ground as he went to the ground, but it but never moved. And they called it an incomplete pass. Uh, yeah. Oh, pretty much cost us the game. So. But you got a rule out of it. <laughs> Yeah. That, that we still don't even know what it is. <laughs> okay. What's a catch? I don't know. Yeah. Who knows? So if you're going to catch the ball, just just catch the damn thing. Don't bobble it or let it touch the ground. or Don't let those refs have a say. That's right, man. Keep the refs out of it. Although they will worm their way into it somehow, some way. <laughs> it's like that Philadelphia game. What the? Some of those calls, I'm like, what the? the, the Ryan Jensen call, they called him. The official ruling was a false start. But on the field, they called it a snap infraction. I looked all through, you know, when I was doing all 22, I sat there and watched it. And I looked all through the rule book. And I don't know. I don't know what they were talking about. I have no idea. Because he was standing up. Ryan Jensen was standing up. The rest of the line was set. He bends down. As soon as he touches the ball, he snaps it. He didn't move. Nobody flinched. I have no idea. Do you what have to set no. for like a second? No, there's nowhere in the rule book that says it. So it's stuff like that. You're just like, see, this is the refs. Just, you know, they just got to get their, their screen time in. Uh-huh. Look at me. Look at me and my. Oh, my gosh. That's what Pat McAfee was saying in one of his videos. Oh, about how they're egotistical funny. and they yeah. always want to be on camera. Uh, a Hockley son, he got on camera for having this ridiculous game. Oh, it was that Cowboys game where they just kept throwing them. It was a good skit anyway. They crack me up sometimes, man. I know. The, we watched a video, A.J. Hawk, what was it, 
what was the title of the video? AJ Hawk. That was not Pat McAfee, though. That was somebody else had done a compilation. Yeah, but it was AJ Hawk, yeah. a menace to society. Yeah. Oh, my God. It had me <laughs> cracking up some of the stuff he says. <laughs> Uh, anyhow, that's their podcast. Let's talk about our podcast. Okay, let's do it. Man, yeah, so anyhow, Rams, we're going to talk about that in a minute. Okay. Bam, we're going to talk about it in, in, in as much detail as we possibly can. Uh, but first off, let's uh, let's cover a little bit of the Philadelphia game. I'm gonna, just going to touch on it real quickly. Uh, wasn't too impressed with our offensive line in that game. Ooh. They were – they had a tough time. Was it the injuries? No, Mm-mm. no, they were they were they had a tough time. The, the, uh, Fletcher Cox, Garrigan, uh, 93, 90, 91, 93, and ninety. <laughs> All uh, of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they were they were giving them a hard time, man. Uh, Donovan Matt, uh, Donovan Smith got thrown a couple times. Ooh. Uh, Jensen got reverse pancaked. I ain't never seen that before. Uh, just it, it wasn't a good show, and then, of course Kappa was Kappa. And then uh, when Worfs got hurt, he he tried to come back in in the second half, and he played I think just one snap, and he got whooped. It, uh, he you could see he went to put his right ankle down, and as soon as he did, he picked it back up, mm-hmm. and then just got plowed. Uh, and then he was like, "I'm done, done." So hopefully we'll have him Sunday. Need him. Gonna need him because Josh Wells came in, and you know we've talked about Josh Wells for years. You know we, we keep saying, uh, hopefully, you know he's he's getting some reps in He'll and get better, get better and everything. But no, no, he he got whooped on a consistent basis. But Tom Brady played an excellent game. I mean, it, it was damn near perfect. His passes were so accurate. I mean, he was throwing the guys that were covered. And putting it right in their hands and just making the right decision every time. Uh, he did have one sack, I say, was on him because uh, he had two checkdowns he could have gone to, and he decided to step up in the pocket. And the pressure he felt wasn't really pressure, uh, and he stepped up. But we were up thirty-one-zero by that point. He, you know, I don't think he really cared. <laughs> right. <laughs> and he stepped up and got tripped up, hmm. and got sacked there. But he played great. Uh, let me see. Whitehead, he did great. I, I I don't know who to give the game ball to, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Our defense played so good. Our secondary, oh, my God, they were all over the place. They batted so many balls down and were just excellent yeah. in coverage. And we had, like I said, four or five missed interceptions that we should have had. You know, we were bounced out of their hands or uh, – through their hands. See, and that is with the Rams. I'm like, you ain't seen our playoff defense. Right. Yeah. We'll, we'll get to that. In a minute. We'll All get right. to that. In a minute. All right. I know. I'm just so excited. <laughs> calm down. Calm down. <laughs> uh, let me see. Let me see. Uh, the Barrett and JPP I had talked about in the second half. I was like, did they even play in the second half? Uh, they did. They, pl- they played in the third quarter and then here and there. They were okay. on a very, very low pitch count. And I think once we got up to 31 zip, we were just kind of like, yeah, we'll throw him out there every now and then, but mm-hmm. we're not going to, uh, not going to no, force him out there. Mm-hmm. Didn't need him. Uh, Levante David, I just wasn't playing with a lot of energy. Oh. You know, I don't He's know if it's. He's not back to game speed. Yeah, yet. that's what I'm hoping. Uh, but the play of the game was definitely. That Barrett interception. That was just so damn beautiful. Yeah. And outside linebacker. Yeah. Didn't he like tip it to himself? He caught it one handed. Just caught it. Jumped up fifteen feet in there. <laughs> caught the damn <laughs> ball. I mean, it was a great play by the uh the Eagles. They you know, did everything right there, but you just can't win against that. Mm-mm. Good lord. Nothing you can do. Nothing you can do. Uh, and, and we played a lot of that soft defense, you know, especially in the fourth quarter. But again, it was just more of a prevent. Uh, they picked up like a hundred yards in the fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can think right off right off hand seventy yards they did in that one drive. It was two plays, and would they end up total like two hundred yards total? 
So, I mean, we held them for three quarters to like 100 yeah, yards. I think they had 300 yards. They were like pretty evenly matched with Brady in our run game. Well, they didn't get anything going on until yeah, the third late. quarter. Yeah. And it, a lot of it was you could t- you could see our defense was not playing hard in the third and fourth quarter. I mean, they were they were really because you could tell they were like, "Hey, we got this game, man. Let's mm-hmm. just let's not get hurt." Yeah, you know. So smart. You got to save that energy. Yes. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's about it. Oh. <laughs> That was a short one. <laughs> yeah. Let me see. The defense allowed just seven first downs, 179 total yards, and no points through three quarters. Yeah, so we had 179 yards. Uh, 44 wow. rushing yards allowed to the number one ranked rushing run team mm-hmm. in the first 45 minutes. Ooh. Yeah. We had 10 quarterback hits, two sacks, six tackles for a loss, seven pass defenses, and two interceptions. That's just crazy. dominated. <laughs> yeah. Just dominated. Yeah. Uh, if you if uh, the things I found interesting videos are out, the stuff that I see in the all 22 that I find interesting, I uh, got two videos out, part one and part two. They're both long, one 16 minutes, others 20. So um, I, I hate putting them out long like that. As I know a lot of people like the, the short 10 minute videos, but I was just in such a anxious to get them all out. And I was just like, eh, that's just break it up into two. You did it fast, too. Yeah. Like Wednesday. Yeah. Well, it, it, well, like it came out Wednesday. fast. It was out Monday. Monday evening. So I was able to record it and convert it and get everything set up before Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Very happy about that. Yeah. So yeah, go check it out. You can see some interesting stuff. There was some funny stuff and some uh, wild things that you don't see on the on the broadcast version. We we had some good plays. We We did some rather tricky plays one of them i just i just loved it and we did it in the fourth quarter we were basically just trying to run out the clock and we wanted a first down so we we lined up like we were going to run in a jumbo package we had cam Brait behind uh the two extra linemen one of them was a tight end i think it was gronkowski and normally when we do that we run to that side and you know everybody knows you're going to run there uh you might do a little something tricky and run to the left instead of the right, whatever. <laughs> but it was definitely a run play and uh, hiked it. Brait was kind of in the backfield behind the line. And we hiked it and he went over like he was going to block the backside uh, outside linebacker coming in or defensive end. And they both go to go at each other and the defensive lineman act, you know, like got around him and, and break kind of act like, oh no, you got around me. But, the, <laughs> but he faked it. It, it. He was, that was what he was supposed to do. And uh, he ran out to the flats and was wide open and we threw it to him. He picked up like 20 some yards. Boom. Yeah, it was great. It was a beautiful design play. I was mm-hmm. like, ooh, I like that. We, we, you know, we throw a couple in a, a game usually that are like, ooh, that's pretty nifty. I wonder if those are Brady plays. Well, you know, they did that when he was at the Patriots. That's yeah. what they were known for. You know, probably two, three really unique plays every game. Might be him. Yeah. Don't know. Don't know. So anyhow, if you get a chance, go check out that, that video if you want to see more about the Philadelphia Eagles game. But we are not going to talk about that because that's in the past now. That's in the mm-hmm. past. <laughs> We're talking about the future. Whoa. Uh we got some news. You want to cover news? You want to get into the... I don't have a whole lot of news. I just have a few things. I got a few things. Okay. Um, Todd Bowles interviewed with the Vikings for head coach today. Mm-hmm. Oh, and Raheem Morris, the defensive coordinators for the Rams, he is interviewing tomorrow evening with, I think it's the Vikings. Is it? Or yeah. the Bears? Might be the bear. I don't care. My, Ralph the, and I were just talking. Did we do this on the podcast? We were like, nobody's interviewed him. Yeah. Or you yeah. said that you weren't. You were surprised. I don't know. I can't. I can't remember when I have. Anyway, Ralph and I were having this conversation about Raheem not having any opportunities, and then like five minutes later, we saw on Twitter that he had one interview. I mm-hmm. think. Gosh, I want to say it was the Bears. Not real sure. 
Uh, the Panthers are expected to hire former Giants head coach and ex-Packers offensive coordinator Ben McAdoo as their offensive coordinator. So now the question is going to be, uh, where is Rule going to be coaching in 2023? <laughs> He'll go back to college. <laughs> college. Uh, just, I don't know, man. The, you just got to wonder about some of this stuff. You know, what are these people thinking? I don't know. I think it's just so hard to do. You just throw throw stuff off the wall, see what sticks. Yeah. Sometimes it works. Uh, Buccaneers head coach Bruce Aarons was fined fifty thousand dollars <laughs> for smacking Andrew Adams in the head. Was it Andrew Adams? Yeah. Smacked him in the helmet. Helmet. Uh, you know, I watched that, and when I saw it, I was like, I thought he was congratulating him. Yeah. You know, and then later it comes out, they find him, and then they asked him about it, and he was like, yeah, you know, he was trying to pull people off the pile. This was right after we had got the uh, punt return fumble from Scotty Miller. Scotty Miller. Mm -hmm. And the uh, Andrew Adams was, like, going to pull people off the pile, and Bruce Aarons went out there and smacked him in the helmet and then pushed him. They find him fifty thousand oh dollars. What is going on with the NFL, man? What, I mean, we are soft. I know. It's like it's going to be the all female league soon. National female league. Well, then everyone was like, "Oh, AB was right." Like, shut up. What does that? What does one even have to do with the other? Absolutely a nothing. AB was right. Oh, um, yeah. AB was right about yeah, BA. Yeah. Like, it's completely different, but like, okay. See, oh, yeah. AB told us he was mean. Yeah, he's such a mean guy. I know. Stop it. Yeah, I I don't know. The, the stadium was so loud. We had just gotten a turnover. You know, he couldn't yell at Adams. He had to do something, I guess. But Well, okay, it's like a seven-year-old man smacking you on a helmet. Yeah, it like, wasn't even. he's going to hurt himself. It wasn't even like a full hand on smack. It was kind of like his fingers grazed the helmet. Yeah. It's just all silly, man. It's all ridiculous. Stop it. I mean, I, 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 what, what is the NFL trying to say with that? You know, we, you, you got to be nice. Mm -hmm. can't, can't be a mean coach. Something. I yeah. guess so. I don't know. But didn't Urban Meyer just get fired because he kicked somebody? Yeah, right. Yeah. Kicked the kicker. Who knows? Supposedly. I think that they need to pretend that they're being consistent. Yeah. We cut uh, Richard Robinson and Justin Watson so that David and Bernard could return. I thought we brought Watson back. Yeah, on the practice squad. Okay. And then got rid of... I was getting to that. Okay, now. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think that... Okay. Oh, that's a long time ago. That happened last week. That's an old note. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. We already talked about that on the podcast last... Goodness. Last podcast. Okay. Get, get it together, See, Molly. See, I'm not... I got nothing together. What day is it? Where are we? Uh, it, Who did you say the Panthers are bringing in? McAdoo? McAdoo. For what? Offensive coordinator. Oh, okay. Because they were interviewing for Jay. They were interviewing Jay Gruden too. <laughs> that would be just as bad. <laughs> they well, they interviewed him yesterday. <laughs> so <laughs> I didn't even know he was still in the league. I know. I know. Isn't <sighs> any Gruden name like completely off limits at this point? Uh, man. Speaking <laughs> of the Washington Redskins, okay. you remember Clinton Portis? He was, yes. he was a running back for the Washington Redskins. He he got sentenced to prison. He's going to be going in March for six months. For what? He got six months prison sentence and six months probation for fraud. Now check this out. Uh, it's a it's a part of a scheme that's involved more than fifteen NFL players. Ex NFL. I remember players. when they started getting arrested. Oh, okay. I remember this, but I can't remember something with like. The health care? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're getting money from the NFL player health reimbursement account plan and then just spending it. They're saying uh, Clint Portis, what his thing was, he, he needed a, an oxygen chamber and a cryosauna. So he got $100,000 from this the, the health reimbursement account plan and then spent it on drugs and hookers. Oh, no. 
I assume. He didn't I, buy the I stuff. thought that you were going to tell me that he actually bought that, and then they said, oh, that's not covered. And I was like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but there's 15 other players who have been sentenced. I think wow. he's the last one. Yeah. <clears throat> They're going after him. Were they all acting independently or? No, I think it was a, like a scheme. They were all working together. With a Robert McCune, a former NFL linebacker. I don't know who he is. Mm-mm, never heard of him. Yeah, he seemed to be the ringleader. What? <laughs> uh, okay. That's uh, crazy. The Rams have designated running back Daryl Henderson, defensive lineman Sebastian Joseph Day, and defensive back Robert Rochelle to return. No. Yeah. Well, you know, you said – uh, Henderson and I got real upset about that one, but now that I think about it, we we don't care about him. No, we don't care. He's a running back. Yeah, I mean, Acres, Henderson, Michelle, they're all the same. Whoever, we got to stuff all of them. Um, what was the what was that defensive back's name? I just said I can't remember. Oh, Robert Rochelle or Rochel. I don't know. You know how I am about pronouncing names. <laughs> I know. Let me look at it. I have no idea. R O C H E L L. Oh, I would say Rochelle. That's what I said. So they will be on the lineup. He's a cornerback, mm. which they're going to need as many cornerbacks as they can get. Oh, yeah. And their uh, safety, Taylor Rapp, is out. Yes, and starter. the left tackle, Andrew Whitworth, is out. I know. I was going to say that. Mm-hmm. What? I know. That should be pretty interesting. But they're yeah. saying that his backup, Nate Boom, N- no Boom, Joseph, no Boom, <laughs> is... Uh, better? Yeah. Yeah. Like, he's as good, if not better. They're saying uh, no Boom would be the starter, but Andrew Whitworth won't retire. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. He's like Andrew Whitworth is the oldest offensive lineman. He's like forty. Yeah, he's not. He's you know, no, he's not that much, that great anymore. Uh, Nick Scott is he? He's the strong safety. Is he playing or not? Yes, okay. but he was behind Jordan Fuller. Right. I don't know what happened to Jordan Fuller. He's on injured reserve. Okay. So they're they're gonna be a little weak in safety. We'll cover that in just a moment. Uh, Tristan Wirfs and Ryan Jensen both practiced today. Good sign. Tristan Wirfs out of his boot. He's out there, but we will not know about them until an hour and a half before kickoff. Oh, no. Yep. That's what <sighs> Arian said. Said we're not going to make a decision until an hour and a half before kickoff. They just don't want to tell the other side. Yeah. They just don't want to tell them. Yeah. It's, get, it's getting tricky it's time now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the Bucks have ruled out running back Ronald Jones, wide receiver Brashard Perriman, uh, and we've got five questionable: Tristan Worse, Ryan Jensen, Jason Pierre-Paul, Sean Murphy, Bunting, and Cyril Grayson. But it was a shock with Perriman. I was like, "What? What happened to Perriman?" I know, and I thought maybe it was a concussion, but it says it's a hip and abdomen injury. I don't remember. That. When did he get that? I don't. Remember. I don't know. That sucks. I know. I know. You know, at the beginning of the season, we were talking about how deep we are at wide receiver Mm -hmm. and how we're fine. And now we're like, oh, no, we only have Mike Evans. Remember that a few years ago, same thing happened. We were like five deep in in linebacker. Mm -hmm. (laughs) They all got hurt. Yeah. They ended up being one of our weakest spots. So hopefully Wurfs will play. You know, it'll be a big thing. But, you know, even if he does play, how good is he going to? How healthy is he going to be? Yeah, and if he can't play, then Josh Wells is in, and mm. he's got a quad injury, so he's not even healthy either. And, oh, I mean, yeah. we don't have to say it. It's Josh Wells. We would much rather have Tristan Wirfs out there. Yeah, even if he's hurt. <laughs> even if he's hurt. <sighs> oh, Josh, you know, I love you, man. Just make some blocks. <laughs> stop, stop standing up so straight. Dude gets pushed back way too easy, man. Uh, that's going to be scary. Okay, uh, last bit of news here. The NFL just released a memo that there will be, with the 
rest of the playoff NFL football teams, no more testing for the Wu flu. No more. It's done. They said that uh, <clears throat> they are eliminating the distinction between vaccinated and unvaccinated. Now, if you have, if you're showing symptoms, then you got to be tested. What's duh? Like, let's yeah, right. just okay. Yeah, okay. Like everyone can agree to that, I think. Right. So, and and from from what I understood, <laughs> there's only like twelve players mm-hmm. who are unvaccinated who have not had the mm-hmm. Rona. They need to be running tests on them. Or running something. tests on them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> something the, like experimental. Get no, no. <laughs> I mean, just like map out their DNA to figure right. out what the common denominator is. Like maybe there's a reason they haven't gotten it yet. Right. Well, you know, that's what I've been saying since the beginning that, you know, it's, antibodies are more important than mm-hmm. anything. That's mm-hmm. what we should be testing for. Anyhow, so there we go. Got the news done. Let's get it, man. The Rams. Good Lord. Ah. <gasps> <laughs> I mean, we're going to win. Total oh, yeah. confidence. We're oh, going to yeah. win. Yeah. It's going to be a tough one. It's going to be a tough one. And we have to remember that any given Sunday, any game. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, um, you know, the Jags can put up a fight with the Bills or, I mean, it just. The, the difference between the top and the bottom in the NFL seems like a lot, but right. really it's not that much. No. Uh, what What is the spread? Three points to them, right? Yes. Rams plus three. Hold on. Uh, the, the Bills and the Kansas City Chiefs have a one-point spread. I was like, oh, that's nice. That's going to be a good game. That's going to be a good mm-hmm. game. But it ain't going to be as good as ours. No. Ours is going to be the game of the week. I'm trying to pull up our game to see what this spread is. We played the Rams week three and lost to them. It was, what was the final score? 30? 34 to 24. 34 to 24. Uh, you know, it was a tight game all the way up until about midway third quarter. You know, they, they we were going back and forth. Uh, they say they scored first seven zip, then we scored seven seven, right? And then it go back and forth, and they got up, and then we kicked a field goal, and uh, <clears throat> there was a bunch of stuff in that game that was just crap. Mm-hmm. The refereeing was horrible. That was the game that I got so mad about because that. The, the Rams player in the secondary, can't remember. Jalen Ramsey. No, it wasn't Ramsey. He's he was a. Uh, I think he's the one that hit Gronk in the ribs, that and then stood r- over him. That was number five, right? Ramsey. No, no. Oh my goodness, I can't remember who it was. But anyhow, he somebody had hit Gronk in the ribs, and this was when Gronk got hurt. And you got to remember, we went into this game. Uh, SMB was hurt, right? He was mm-hmm. out. Yeah. Uh, Jamel Dean got hurt in this game, so he went out. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had, uh, I think JPP was hurt. He was out. Mm-hmm. And it, during this game, uh, Gronk got hurt. Uh, Giovanni Bernard got hurt. There was a, there was a, we had some serious injury issues with this game, but in the end zone, Brady threw it to to, to Gronkowski. And it went right in his hands, and then he dropped it, right? I, I want to say this was the third quarter. And then the very next play, Gronk is in the back of the end zone. Brady throws it to him. It, went, it was a bad pass. He was kind of throwing it away. And Gronk was looking away, and one of the defenders of the Rams, and I can't remember who it was, lowered his head and hit Gronk right in the helmet, launched, and hit him. And this was after the play was over. And it was uncalled. There was it was just a horrible, horrible ref game. But we got beat. Uh, Stafford did a great job, you know, picking us apart in that game. But the main issue, and this is the number one thing that is going to win us this game coming up Sunday. Energy. Uh, you know, physicality. They're a very physical team. Mm-hmm. And the, the, every time we played them, they out physical us, and they out, they bring the energy. You know, they they're out there, man. They're flying around all through the, the whole game. They're, they're hitting, 
They're making tackles. They're jumping around. And we don't. This is this has happened two years in a row now. You know, we we just kind of just come out flat and mm-hmm. you know, we're not laying the wood on them. We're letting them beat us up. And that has got to change. That's going to be the key to the game Sunday, if you ask me. All the schemes, throw it out the window. You know, whether you should run or pass, run, play zone, man, you know, cover three, cover four, (laughs) whatever. That ain't going to mean nothing. I think the key to this game, just say it right up front, we need to punch them in the mouth the whole game. And be energetic about it. Punch them in the mouth and laugh at them. Ah! Like we did to the Saints in the playoffs. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And that's what we do in the playoffs. I know. You know, I was just thinking about how our guys love to hold a grudge. And this game in particular, when we played in week three, was very physical and dirty, I thought, mm-hmm. by the Rams. And our guys remember that. Oh, yeah. I mean, our guys hold grudges like that to the point they're making compilations of everyone who smeared them on Twitter. And once they ball out, then they're posting the stuff online. So I think that uh, they're holding on to this game. And I think they've been circling this one Mm -hmm. for the whole season. I do, too. I do, too. I think there's a lot of revenge that's going to happen in this game. Mm -hmm. A lot. And I want to see it. I want I want to see us come out with energy. I want the first tackle we make, I want everybody to be just jumping up and down. And that reminds me, you fans that are going out there, you better make so much damn noise that the announcers can't hear themselves. Mm-hmm. We've got home field advantage. We need to take advantage of that. Well, you know, we played in L.A. Mm-hmm. Um, and Matt Stafford had times when he could not hear. Because we were loud? Yeah. In L.A.? Yeah. That's right. I remember the announcer saying that. There was yeah. a big contingent of Buccaneer fans there. Uh, and, you know, we've got a, a big advantage because we play on natural grass. You know, they play on turf. So it's going to slow them down being on Oh, grass. that's interesting. Yeah. Good. That's yeah. what we need. Yeah. So, you know, we get the the – the balance is in our favor a little mm-hmm. bit. Now, w- number one, we got to bring our A game, at least B plus. You know, we ain't gonna we ain't gonna beat them if we bring our B game. <laughs> you know, B plus, we might could, but if we bring our A plus game, they can't beat us. Mm-hmm. No way. But if they if we bring our A plus game and they bring their A plus game, we'll win. If we bring our B game and they bring their A game it's going to be close. (laughs) Um, What you were saying about the energy in the first game, the secondary was so beat up like we were missing SMB. They were kind of picking on Cockrell a little Mm. bit. Uh, I thought he played well. I thought so. Um, But you could tell they were kind of going after him. And Mm -hmm. I just, this is kind of their time when they show up is in the playoffs. Like SMB just went off last year. Mm-hmm. So I think this is a perfect opportunity for them, especially with someone like Cooper Cup, to show up again. He's going to show up. I mean, there's yeah. there's there's no getting around that. He's going to catch balls, and he's he's probably going to get 100 yards. I mean, he's gotten over 100 yards every time he's played us. I mm-hmm. think. You know, so I, I honestly I'm not worried about it. I what I'm worried about is that we come out flat. Yeah, and we let them push us around. And that happened on offense. Like we had a lot of drop passes and just Brady wasn't really connecting with the guys. Um, And so that really hurt us the first time. Yes. Yeah. They were more, more physical on Mm -hmm. offense and defense. We need to be more physical on defense and offense. I mean, seriously, we need to, I want to see personal foul penalties. I want to see Ryan Jensen out there up in Aaron Donald's face, you know, it just <clears throat> that's that's how you beat this team psychologically. That's, that's what the 49ers do. Mm-hmm. 49ers play them hard. I mean, 49ers week 18, they were down 17 zip. 17 zip going into the second quarter. And they were still out there balling and just they were knocking the mess out of those guys. Mm-hmm. And uh, every time they made a tackle, they were jumping up and down, you know, and getting up in their faces. And then they get up in the third and fourth quarter, and what they do? 
they started running the ball. <laughs> they just started running the ball straight down their throats. And it just morally discouraged you. I mean, you could see the Rams were just like, what is going on here? We're just getting beat up again. And, yeah, I like that Mitchell. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. He gets – you get the ball and you get hit mm-hmm. and you're tackling. Don't go down. You know, just keep – just make them fight you. You know, just street fight. It's going to be a street fight. I mean, we're going to be out there just slugging it out with these guys. Mm-hmm. And we have to because if we don't let if we let them do what they've done the past two years, where they just come out and they just start beating us up and jumping around and hooting and hollering and getting it up in our face and hitting us after the whistle and all that good stuff, we're gonna lose. You know we can't we can't uh, we can't scheme out of that. Mm-hmm. But I just think it's Brady in the playoffs. Oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like. I think just that factor mm. is so intimidating to people, our opponent. Yes. and You know who you're going up against. You know he's done this more times than you've even dreamed about it. Mm-hmm. it th- there's a number of factors with this. One, McVay. You mm-hmm. know, he's lost every time he's gone to the playoffs. He lost and the Super Bowl. Lost, lost the Super Bowl to yeah. who? Tom Brady. Tom Brady. Yes. Uh, so, you know, that's in his head. That's in mm-hmm. his head. But worse than that is Matthew Stafford. Matthew, this is completely new territory for Matthew Stafford. He just won his first playoff game last week. He ain't never been here before. Mm-mm. But the play, everybody that watches football knows this. The playoffs are a different beast. <laughs> you know, you're not conserving energy. You're not, you know, trying to make sure you don't get hurt. You know, you're out there trying to do everything you can to win this game. Because if you don't, you go home. So it's totally different. The refs ref it different. The players play it different. The coaches coach it different. You know, and Stafford's never been here. Mm-mm. This is the first division title he's ever won. You know, and he's playing on a new team with a coach that, I don't want to say is skittish, but, you know, I'm sure he's a little gun shy about keep going to the playoffs and getting knocked out. Yeah. So I, that's a huge, huge psychological benefit for us. If we can get to Stafford and just flummox him, which he's easy to flummox. Yeah. You know, he's, uh, he's good at, you know, throwing off of different platforms and, you know, when he gets outside the pocket, he can make stuff happen, but he makes dumb decisions when you fluster him. Mm-hmm. You know, and I honestly believe that stat wise turnovers are going to be the key to this game. Whoever has the most mm-hmm. turnovers is going to win. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and once Stafford starts throwing turnovers, you know, mm-hmm. it's it's usually it's downhill from there. Yeah. And he doesn't recover well from those. Mm-hmm. He's not like Tom Brady. And like you said, I mean, Tom Brady's been here. <laughs> how many times? He's got, he's got more playoff wins. Than he's most. got more Super Bowl wins than Matt Stafford does. Super Bowl appearances. Yeah. Or playoff appearances. Yes. And. You know, I mean, this is this is when Tom Brady shines. We all know that. We've been watching this for almost a half a century now. Tom Brady shows up in the playoffs and, this, and the magic happens. And you're like, well, how'd they do that? So that's what they're going to be facing, the Tom mm-hmm. Brady playoff team. You know, Tom Brady, he, at this time of the year, what's he, what's he say? It's uh, not focus. It's all about football. Ah, he's got a phrase he says. But, you know, he sends the kids and the wife away. He doesn't <laughs> go to no movies. He doesn't do dinners. He's just football, football, football. And, you know, that's that's what they're going to have to face. You know, this so does he let the kids come back, like, after he's lost or whatever, and the times he's gotten knocked out, like, how long until they're allowed to come back? <laughs> Would you want to be back? No. <laughs> that's when I oh, take a God. vacation. Get, let's get away from dad. <laughs> So I, you know, I think that could be a huge, huge. Uh, they, they don't know yet, mm-hmm. you know. They don't know what Stafford's got in the playoffs. You know, they got the one game Sunday. Was it Sunday? Yeah. No Monday. That was the Monday game. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so that's I mean, another thing. They're a day mm-hmm. off of us. They got yeah. one day less. Yeah. There's on paper, man. There's a lot of things that tilt our way. I agree. Uh, I forget what I was going to say. 
You know, Stafford's going to, you know, last, let's say Monday when they played, they played the Arizona Cardinals who, you know, they were on a downward slide and they they were playing at home and they, uh, you know, had a pretty easy time of it. You know, I, I, I don't, any given Sunday is true, but I can tell you what's not going to happen. They're not going to stomp us. They're not going to have an easy time. Ain't, that just ain't going to happen. <laughs> you know, and Stafford's going to have to deal with that. He's going to have to deal with, one, going up against Tom Brady, two, going into a, a, a hostile territory a hostile territory in a playoff game. He's never done that before mm-hmm. uh, and try to yeah. win. This is like career defining for him. I mean, it's yeah. kind of the point in his career where he needs to leave a legacy. And is it going to be the quarterback of the Detroit Lions for 10 years? Is that going to be his legacy? Uh, yeah. And he's I don't, hes never made it to the division round, and I, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and, you know, he's going up against Tom Brady mm-hmm. at Tom Brady's house. And, you know, we got a monster stadium. He's not used to play. He's played his whole career on turf. You know, they, man, there's just a lot of small things that could very easily yeah. tilt this in our direction quickly. So, anyhow, down to the technical aspects of it all. Mm-hmm. What do you What do you think we need to do to win? Like, do you have any ideas? I don't Scheme know. Scheme wise or whatever. I think Brady needs to get the ball out kind of fast. I hope Fournette. Is activated because I could see those little dump off passes to be pretty successful, or even his running. Um, and I just think they gotta minimize any kind of mistakes. Um, I, you know, we could attack downfield with their starting safeties being out. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do have concerns about the depth in our. Wide receiving core. That makes me a little nervous. With yeah. Perriman out. And, it just makes it harder. Uh, yeah, and Godwin. He was a huge part of the mm. first time. But it was. It just puts a lot on Mike. Um, so. Yeah, Johnson had a pretty good game in week three. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gronkowski did okay yardage and stuff-wise, but he dropped way too many passes. Yeah. Uh, That's what I feel like we had a lot of drops. Oh, game. we shot ourselves in the foot that whole game. We missed a field goal going into halftime. And we drove all the way down there and then got in field goal range, missed it. Uh we had that remember the I think it was a, a bomb to Deshaun Jackson and Edwards fell down. He slipped mm-hmm. and fell down. So Deshaun Jackson ended up being uncovered out there. Um just a bunch of stuff like that. Yeah. You know, and we had over. It was on both sides of the ball, too. I yeah, mean, we were just yeah. not playing a cohesive. Yeah. Game. Uh, Dean had that interception that went right in his hand mm-hmm. and he dropped it. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we were not on point week three for sure. No. And we're just playing at a completely different level. Yeah. And it's playoffs. 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 <laughs> Uh, we had a lot of penalties in that week three game. I think we had seven penalties, but uh, you know how I feel about penalties. Yeah. It, they, it definitely wasn't the reason why we lost the game. Right. Know? And I, I ain't worried about penalties Sunday either. Whether we get more than they do or less than they do, I don't think it's going to make a difference. So you think we should do quick, short passes to the outside, running back, then flats, yeah. mm-hmm. screen passes, bubble passes? Just know. out to the outside. Just out there. Just out to the flats. Just get it out there. Just get it out there. Well, the thing of it is, is their cornerbacks are very good at tackling. Ram- mm-hmm. Ramsey's a great tackler. You know, so it's like uh, like you were saying, that they're susceptible deep. They're mm-hmm. safeties and everything. And it's been that way all year long. But their thing is, is that, you know, they, they get a lot of pressure with their front four. Mm-hmm. They get to you so fast that yes. you don't really have time to go out there. Right. Yeah, and so their whole defense is predicated on – uh, being able to stop you from making those quick passes, you know, because they're going to get the pressure. I mean, they they set up to keep people from going deep. You know, they play a lot of cover three and zone in the back. Uh, they, they play zone all the damn time. They hardly ever play cover uh, mm-hmm. man coverage, but they uh, they keep they, they usually play three deep, and 
they rush four, and then they keep their cornerbacks and their linebackers are always looking to that quick dump off pass. You know, so if you can if you can withstand the 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 onslaught or the rush, you can go deep and get them. Mm-hmm. You know, but I don't. I don't know if we're going to be able to with. I know with their offensive, <laughs> our line, all offensive banged line up. Man. Yeah. It hurts. Uh, yeah. You know, I've I've thought about this all week ever since uh, we knew we were going to play the Rams. And to be honest with you, I mean, normally I can come up with something that I'm like, yeah, I think here's how we could do it, and they, and they never do it. But it, it's always fun to think of that. You know, mm-hmm. how you can strategically beat their. Defense. With them, I can't. I don't, I don't know. I have not a clue. I mean, I'm not saying they're indefeatable, but every time I think of stuff, you know, like going deep, you go, well, you got to stop the front, you know, four from getting mm-hmm. to you. And you're like, eh, that's kind of hard. Uh, you know, and then you go, well, you know, you, you drop it off to the flats, you throw short. Well, you know, they, they tackle very well. You know, they look for that stuff, you know, and they will intercept it too. Uh, you know, so then, I, you know, if anything, I would say, the middle of the field Gronkowski is where we're going to really get hit pay dirt because their linebackers suck. And, mm-hmm. you know, they can't cover him. And I think it would be great to just have Gronkowski go out there and just beat the crap out of him for a while. Mm-hmm. You know, because he's hard to take down. I know, but they hurt him last time. No, no. Oh, yeah, they will try and hurt you. Mm-hmm. And they will try to hurt Gronkowski because he knows that Gronkowski can hurt them. Yeah. And this way, you know, I love Gronkowski, but I wish he was meaner. You know, I really do. Uh, I mean, he's such a yeah. nice guy. <laughs> you know, and you don't see him out there getting in people's faces or He lets Tom them. do that. <laughs> yeah, Tom's his daddy. <laughs> <laughs> his enforcer. Yeah. So, I, you know, I don't know. And even on defense, I'm like, you know, I can't, I can't think of any way to really, you know, because you can't. If you if you bracket cup or you know just double team him or you know try to take him out of the game, you know, they got Odell Beckham, they got uh, Higby, Jefferson. Uh, Jefferson is he in? I thought he was out. Oh no, it's uh, Woods. Yeah, you're right. Uh, yeah, Jefferson. I mean, they've got plenty mm-hmm. of weapons, so you can't you can't just take Cup out. And, and you saw Arizona. Arizona pretty much took Cup out. Mm-hmm. And they got whooped. So you just kind of have to expect, you might go, well, you know, that cup gets the ball. We'll just tackle him when he so catches So what? It. Do you let them dictate the game, you know? No, you try to stop them, but I, I just don't see any way to, you know, that's going to be effective. Like a total shutdown. Right, yes, yeah. Every, everything I could think of, I'm like, well, they got this and they can counter with that. Da, 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 da. So when it comes down to it, I think that's what we faced with these guys every time we faced them. It's, it's just such a great matchup. We just match up with them great in all aspects. And it really just boils down to Will, mm-hmm. who wants it the most. That's why I say, man, we need to go out there and just immediately start punching these guys in the face. Take their we will We got to get the ball first and drive it down the field and score. Immediately. As long as we're doing it while we're stepping on their face, I'm fine. <laughs> okay. I don't care if we, I'm telling you, man, I don't care if we get 21 down, as long as we're out there punching them. I don't care because I think that's going to be the key to winning. That and turnovers. I think that's what we need to look for. That's what we need. We don't need to be stopping Cooper Cup or Higby or Jefferson or Odell. We need to be intercepting. We need to get turnovers. Hmm. Get to get stripped the ball out. Yeah, because I would say Matt Stafford in that sense is easy to shake him. Mm-hmm. He's mistake prone. Yeah. Yeah. Once he starts getting flustered, yeah. he starts making more mistakes, more Get mistakes. Him rattled. He, yeah, he starts trying harder and harder and harder. And the harder he tries a lot. Mm-hmm. He'll, he'll yeah, he's got, he decisions. reminds me of uh Matt Ryan in that way. Yes. Yeah. Where he gets rattled and flustered and then tries to do everything and then he yeah. screws it up. Yeah, if he can sit back there and just pick you apart i mean he's a great quarterback because yeah. I mean, he will look you off he will fake you out he will throw side he will do all this crazy stuff man but once you start you know knocking him around a little bit batting his balls down a few interceptions he's a mess 
So, you know, I thought all kinds of stuff, you know, uh, use our tight ends, you know, uh, we, you know, put three out there and have them run routes and, you know, uh, the, the, do the screen plays, the bubble pass, you know, just, just stuff to the outside, uh, deep throws, run it. Well, I mean, we know that's not going to happen, but I know. yeah, I'd love to see it. You know, let's just go out there and just start pounding the rock. Uh, a Gronk in the middle. Uh, did Giovanni Bernard? You know, he had good success with him in week three because he's got that oomph, you know, where, mm-hmm. you know, he's not going to go down easy. And Fournette's good for that, too. You know, he doesn't go down easy. Right. Uh, but honestly, I just, I don't know what's going to win it. I have no idea. And I, I don't know what the coaches are going to come up with. I'm really anxious to see what Bowles is going to do, you know, because mm-hmm. he always – uh, has a funky defense for different teams, hmm. and you know what? I mean, are, are we going to blitz? You know, sometimes what would we be effective. Um, sometimes we don't blitz that much. Sometimes we blitz all the damn time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? It felt like the first game we did not get to Stafford that much. Like yeah, we I think were- we got one or two sacks. Yeah, and I don't think we even really started pressuring him until the second half. Because yeah. he was getting he was he was he was getting those quick passes out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we short. got one sack for twelve yards. Yeah. Gosh, Brady had four hundred and thirty two yards and a touchdown and was sacked three times for twenty one yards. And we lost that game with those kind of stats. Yeah. He had 55 attempts. Oh, that was the one we had 13 yards rushing. Mm-hmm. Or no, 35 yards rushing. Ooh. Yeah, and that was mainly Bernard, right? I mean, uh, the, no, Tom for- Brady had 14 yards. <laughs> <laughs> he was our leading rusher. <laughs> I remember we had Fournette and Ronald yeah. Jones in that game, and then Bernard pretty much took over in the second half, right? No, Third he didn't quarter. get any rushing yards at all. Well, we were passing to him. Yeah, yeah, he got those. But so Ronald Jones had 11 yards rushing, and Fournette had eight. Hmm. And Godwin had two. Hmm. But they only had, oh, they had 76 yards. <laughs> they had twice our rushing yards. So we had to pass. We had no other toys. 432 yards. Yeah, well, I don't know. I, I, I'd love to see us to run it quite frequently, just to mm-hmm. just to beat them up. Well, I was looking to see where they were ranked as far as rush defense goes. Yeah, I th- I think neither one of our neither one of our uh, teams are going to be able to stop the other from from scoring. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to be a pretty high flying game. Uh, but and it's gonna, it's all gonna come down to who makes the most, mis- the least mistakes, mm-hmm. turnovers. But I think all that's gonna be predicated on it, who's punching who in the mouth. Mm-hmm. You know. So uh, we just gotta come out swinging, sucker punch them immediately. I think so, man. Yeah. I, I like swear it. I do. Because if we don't, they're gonna do it. Yeah. Absolutely. You know they're gonna do it. They're gonna be poking people in the eyes in the pile, kicking you in the nuts. <laughs> You know, hitting you in the head when the ref ain't looking. Yeah. In your face, every play. You know Aaron Donald and Tom Brady are going to be talking crap this mm-hmm. whole game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Jensen ain't going to like that. Jensen's going to be like, dude, you don't talk crap to my quarterback. Don't talk to my quarterback. That's my quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a girlfriend. Don't talk to my girlfriend. <laughs> So, yeah, I fully expect to see Jensen and Donald get into it quite a bit. I want to see it. If if Jensen plays, which I th- I'm pretty sure he will. I okay. think he would be out there playing if, with a half an arm. I think so, too. If he, if he had a, a, his leg caught off under the knee, he'd be like, put a peg on there. <laughs> I'll go out there. He'd be very pirate-themed. <laughs> that would be cool. A peg leg. <laughs> put a patch on him. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is the Bucks by three, okay. by the way. Yeah. So it's the the Bills and the Chiefs are 
a one point. Mm, that's crazy. That is crazy. That's yeah. going to be a great game. Yeah, hopefully. But it's not going to be as good as our game. So yeah. I'm saying our game is going to be physical. So they start Saturday. It's the Bengals, Tennessee, and that's 4.30. And then 8.15 is San Francisco, Green Bay. That Bengals, Tennessee game is going to be interesting. You talk about boxing a fighter and fighting a boxer. Here you got a high flying offense going up against a punch you in the mouth team. Mm-hmm. That's gonna be fun. I like watching Derrick Henry. I do too. He's coming back. Yeah. After he is back. What two months of rest? I know. <laughs> He's gonna He's be, gonna a be a ridiculous. Train. Yeah. Cincinnati ain't gonna know what to hit them. Man. I know. It's gonna be rough. Who do you think is gonna win between the Chiefs and the Bills? Ooh. I would say the Bills. I want to say the Bills, too. Dang it. <laughs> but, that, but the only the thing that would sway me to Kansas City would be Andy Reid. Yeah. He's just so good at, at this time of year pulling out mm-hmm. some weird crap. And they're playing at Kansas City. I thought they were playing at Buffalo. Wait, uh, hold up. Oh, no, no, that's right. Okay. <laughs> I think you're right. Yeah, I was thinking of the New England game. Oh, talk about a beat now. We talked about that in the last podcast. Oof. Yeah. Oof. Ridiculous. Yeesh. We're still talking about it. Yeah, and apparently Bill Belichick went into the Bill's locker room and congratulated everybody. Yeah, and was like having a conversation with Josh Allen. Yeah. I was like, is he trying to poach Josh Allen? <laughs> 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 like Josh is going to get traded to the <laughs> Patriot. It's just going to magically happen. <laughs> yeah. Nobody's going to know how it happened. It's just going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You want to do our score prediction? Yes. What you do you got? Go All right. I'll go first. Okay. <sighs> okay. It's going to be close. I'm going to go 28 21. Ooh. I said it was going to be close, but. You're going 28 21. Who are you predicting? Uh, Buccaneers. Hello. I don't know. I think that our secondary is going to show up. I think that's what's going to happen. <clears throat> Here's what I think is going to happen I think Sue, Barrett, and Vita are going to show up. Mm. And David. Yeah. JPP? I don't, I don't, I don't no. 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 Okay. I don't even know if he's going to play, to be honest with you. He didn't do a whole lot. Hey, he looked a lot better. Last time. Oh, he hasn't participated in practice. Oh, it was uh, personal. Personal, yeah. This week. Do we know what that is? No. Okay. Nobody knows. Yeah, so I, I, I really, you know, I've been saying this all year long. Vita and Sue just have not met my expectations. Uh, you know, Vita, Vita played well against Philadelphia. Sue, yeah. Uh, I, I really expect to see those two light it up because you know they, they hear Aaron Donald this Aaron Donald that Aaron Donald this Aaron Donald that mm-hmm. you know they're like Aaron Donald ain't crack compared to us let's go out there and do something <laughs> and Barrett he had a pretty decent game you know that fucking beautiful interception man god Whew. uh but you know it was his first game back in a while he mm-hmm. got I don't know maybe half the reps maybe I don't even think he got that many uh, he'll probably come in, do his full contingent of reps this week, and I think he's going to make some noise. I think he wants to show up against mm-hmm. Von Miller. Yes, that's all I was going to say. Because, uh-huh. you know, he mentored under Von Miller for years. Yeah, sat behind him. Yeah, and now Von Miller's kind of declined, and you know, Barrett's like, I want to show you. Yeah. Show you what I've become, son. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to go with uh, 27-31. Ooh. All right. Yeah. It might even go into overtime. I wouldn't be surprised. Mm. I can see that. But we got to to play our game, and we cannot shoot ourselves in the foot. Like it seems like we do every time we play these guys. And we got to be tough. We cannot let them out physical us, man. We got to bring energy. We got to come out there. And the crowd's got to do it. I mean, the crowd, we got to be loud. We got to make them have to silent count every down. I don't care if they're beating us by 50 points. I want them to be silent counting. Mm-hmm. 
you know, that helps our guys yeah. because because they can they can see, you know, you lift that leg up, the guard turns around, sees it, he smacks the center, and our guys know when the ball's going to snap. Yeah. Everybody knows when the ball's going to snap. Mm-hmm. So that'll be helpful. Crowd, let's do your job. Twelfth man, come on. <laughs> Make some annoying sounds. <laughs> <laughs> So Molly, twenty one twenty eight, Ralph, twenty seven thirty one. Yes. I got a four point difference. You got a seven point. Seven point. Difference. I'm very optimistic. Yeah, I should change that to twenty eight thirty one. I think it's gonna be a three point game. But you know, any given Sunday, anything could happen. We could go out there, drop an egg. They could go out and drop an egg. Yeah. I doubt very seriously if that's gonna happen on either side. You know, what I fully expect is a knockdown, drag out, high flying fight. There's going to be uh, a lot of big passes, a lot of scoring. People are going to be driving down the field on each other, but there's going to be turnovers. There's going to be scuffles. There's going to be fumbles. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm going to be real nervous today. Oh, I'm, I'm nervous already. <laughs> I've been I'm not all yet. week. <laughs> I'm like, no, this can't end yet. I know. Yes, that's don't, us. Don't yeah, think don't like think that. that way. Guys, think positive. We're going to win. Yes. And then tomorrow night, we'll get to see who we're going to play in the championship. Oh, that's right. Whoever wins between Green Bay and the 49ers. Mm-hmm. Which I was are- not impressed with the 49ers. Well, you know, they're a physical team. You know, they go, they play smash mouth football. They were a little sloppy, though, I thought, and oh, inconsistent. Yeah. Garoppolo, pff, they got to upgrade there. Yeah. Yeah. And they make the other team sloppy, too. They make mm-hmm. you play sloppy football. <laughs> but they've got, you know, like, they got the Mitchell, they got the Debo Samuel. Uh, their defense is, you know, real smash mouth. Uh, and their, their offense is smash mouth. You know, their offensive line is pretty good, especially in the running game. And they, you know, Debo, you just, he's hard to take down and he does everything. The jack of all trades. So, what do you think between them and Green Bay? I think Green Bay. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I don't. I don't think San Francisco is ready for the prime time yet. No. Just, but we'll see. Are they going to get the raw? So it's not going to matter. Really. It's going to be an ugly game. Yeah. No matter how, because they they. 49ers play ugly football. Yeah. And they make you play ugly football. Uh, I, I do not want to go to Lambeau Field. I want to. <laughs> not, Again. Uh, well, the difference this time would be that the crowd is going to be there. Yeah, and it's probably going to be cold as crap. Yeah. It was cold last time. It snowed that morning. But it was, it was kind of balmy, right? It, I mean, it wasn't the wasn't no, wind. It was like 28 degrees. Yeah. I mean, I guess no wind. But it was yeah. cold. Yeah, I just don't want to go there. Just don't want to do it. I'm with you. So let's beat the Rams and hope the 49ers beat Green Bay. That, that'd be the perfect scenario for us. I agree. So m- visualize that in your head, everybody. Manifest. Manifest it and make it happen. All right, you got anything else to say? I do not. Oof. <laughs> I'll tell you, this is going to be... I don't care who we meet in the Super Bowl. This is probably going to be the most difficult game. I said it since the beginning of the year. I was like, Rams, man. Rams are the only team I'm worried about. That, that's not true, though, to be honest with you. Tennessee kind of scares me a little bit. They're just so uh-huh. damn physical. Yeah. Those physical teams freak you out. Huh? Yeah. I'm telling you, man, football's all about tackling and blocking physicality. I don't care what kind of schemes you got, how much skill you got. You get laid out, you can be the best runner in the world. You get laid out a couple times, you don't want to catch the ball anymore. Mm -hmm. That's what we need to do to Cooper. Cooper Cup. Yeah. Lay him out a couple times. Yeah. He don't get hit that often. Mm Mm-mm. He's one of those wild guys. No, he's so sneaky. Yeah. I feel like he's a sneaky receiver. Yeah. He he really is. It's like everybody keys on him, 
And then somehow he just gets open. Yeah, all and he's the just time. and he's standing there. He does not. It's not. He's not <laughs> catching it in motion. Like he's just standing there waiting for the ball, and it comes to him, and he catches it. And there's two other defenders there, and they're like, "How'd that happen?" He's a Houdini. Maybe he teleports. Yeah, uh, yeah. Houdini. Because you do. You see. You'll see the defenders be like, "How? How is he open? Is Where'd he come from? from? <laughs> yeah. All the damn time." It's like what? Oh, uh, yeah. All right. Let's wrap this up, man. It's going to be a great game, guys. Yeah, no matter how it goes, it's going to be an entertaining game. I can guarantee you that. I'd bet money on that. This is not going to be a blowout in either any sense of the – even. <sighs> it's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be tight. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be – this game ain't going to be over until the whistle blows. You know what I'm saying? I, I can't see either one of us kneeling. <laughs> you know, Mm-mm. with a minute left. But we're going to win it. Yeah. Hey, we got two, man. We got two more games. This one in the Super Bowl, the NFC Championship. Three more games, including this one. Two more after this one. We got this. But we got to play like this is the last one. These guys cannot act like they got to conserve their energy or they're scared to get hurt. Can I just say I'm purposely being really positive and then you keep tempering whatever I say. <laughs> I'm like, it's going to be awesome. And you're like, but, you know, it's going to be hard to. <laughs> Ralph. I've, I've got to be a contrarian. Say something positive. Yeah. Be positive. Say something positive. We're going to win. Okay. No doubt about it. This is how we win. <laughs> That's a, I want them walking off the field with bloody noses. Did you do that on purpose? <laughs> Again? <laughs> You couldn't say <laughs> something positive. Uh, I can't do it. Had to temper it. Okay. All right, guys. Let's get out of here. Let's do it. All right. Till next time. Go Bucks.